Hi, everyone. I am so excited because I am speaking with author Owen Dempsey about his newest book. He is going to hold it up for you called The Longest Echo. Oh, first of all, I love your covers. I always love your covers. You have yeah, that's the one. amazing covers. I mean, yeah, I lovely. I don't know what I can say more about them because I was looking through them the other day and I was like, wow, you have got a collection going. This is your fifth. Yeah, I'd love to say, oh yeah, I came up with that myself, but no, <laughs> that wasn't the case. Oh, yeah, I was in the <laughs> um, middle of the night. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. The, the publisher is good at selecting cover designers. That's about as much credit as I can take for that. Yeah, well, you do. I mean, you should, you're very blessed in that. In Absolutely, that yeah. Covers that are so amazing. But mm -hmm. uh, this book, you, <laughs> and I've read all of your books, so I know, but this one, frustrated me with this couple because you I know you okay and I know you're writing as far as romantic couples and and getting them together and keeping them apart and and just frustrating us but this this couple this couple takes the cake on frustration for me because halfway through I'm like Owen please <laughs> and we just make it easier for them <laughs> But no, you had different plans for them. And the main character, Liliana, I'm going to let you talk and I'm going to let you tell us about this story. But I love, she's almost now my favorite character, I have to say. Oh, cool. I'm delighted to hear that. Oh, I love her. Love her. I, love her too. I, I don't think of her what up. I really don't. But I mean, so tell me, tell me how you got this story. Because this is a very unique story. And you find those stories that we know nothing about and bring them forward. And this was one of them. Yeah, so it all goes back to when I used to be a teacher, right? And you remember you remember back those days and you told me to stop being a teacher and then I did. But um, yep. uh, I, I was a teacher and, and White Rose Black Forest had been released and it was doing very, very well, very, very quickly. And it had been my ambition to be a full-time writer since I was about, you know, last 20 years or so. And I was finally, it was within reach, but I didn't want to walk out of my teaching job because I didn't, you know, the kids and I didn't want to be the bad guy. So I wanted to be a nice guy. So I, I hung on until the end of the school year. But those last few months, I might not have been the best teacher in the building those last few months. <laughs> so I was in class with my eighth graders and they're a great group, great kids. And I said to them, you know, do this work, blah, blah, blah. And it was dark group. So I went on Wikipedia and I was looking on my computer and I was looking up the kind of thing that I tend to look up, which is like, worst massacres of world war ii right <laughs> this is fun for me i don't know why <laughs> what is wrong with me anyway um so uh i looked it up and obviously most of them in their eastern front and everyone knows about that but there was a few in the western front which i was really surprised by because you'd never heard of them so i saw i saw there i saw one um the mars Aboto massacre which was the worst massacre in western europe during world war ii and i'd never heard of it and i was like why haven't i heard of this so i started writing about it and that was happened on monte sole and um that was where the interest first began i went over to italy which was amazing yeah i was there in oh, when you could still do things like that yeah when you could still like live a decent life i happy went over you know, aren't you happy you did when you could yeah. Oh, totally, totally, that's a good point. Um, August 2019, me and my heavily pregnant wife, Jill, went over and um, we went to Bologna and took a day trip down to Monte Sole. And I met oh, an historian uh, who, who's resident there on Monte Sole. And her, she has a, she has a um, foundation there, which a few of them, have, which a few of them work in, called the Monte Sole International Peace School. And they promote peace around the world through keeping the uh, the memory of what happened to Monte Sole alive. And it was really great. She was wonderful and um, spoke perfect English, of course, uh, like so many Europeans do, putting us to shame. Mm -hmm. And I include myself with the Americans on that, being Irish. Um, and she showed me around all the different sites, gave me a private tour of all the different sites. It was it was it was. It was an amazing experience. It was fantastic to have her show me around. And it's, it's, it's amazing that these people have dedicated their lives to it. And uh, they do a really good job. I was asking when I was in Bologna, like when I was in the car, car dealership picking up the rental car, I asked the people behind the desk, I said, have you, do you know about this? And they're, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. 
like all the local schools go there for day trips uh, to, to keep, you know, to keep the memory of what happened alive, which is, I think is great and very important. So it's, it's, um, it's a nice feeling. And I, can, and I can't wait to speak to that historian again when the book launches on Tuesday, just to get that message and to get that history and bring it back to a larger audience in the United States and, and the UK and Australia and Ireland and places like that and beyond. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a good feeling. I like that. Well, okay, so Liliana, so you know you're gonna have, you know, a female in because you always do. And you always you always have a strong female, I should say. So when you were coming up with her character, how, you know, what were what was your thought process with her? You you knew it was gonna be the woman who survives. Is that is that how you went about it? Like it's gonna be a woman who's in here yeah. and survives this. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's kind of my default that I go to. Um, yeah, it's just, well, and also I, I, I don't set out to write romance in, in, in my novels. I just think it's such a huge part of a person's existence and a huge part of our lives. And I think everyone, everyone has some kind of a story in that regard, unless, you know, like a priest or something, you know what I mean? Um, so everyone has a big story about that. And I think when we're all 80 or whatever, we'll all have our stories to tell of the relationships that, that really help form our lives. And I think it's such a big thing to tell. If I'm only ever writing one book about Liliana's life, which is very likely, I, um, I would want to have that in there, the story of, of her romantic connection and, and how she you know, found a husband and that kind of thing. And, and so I, did, and I, I like the, the angle of the, I always like the angle of the outsider coming into the situation to, to see. So the outsider being, you know, the American prisoner of war right. who escapes and uh and comes in and then obviously she's going to be a woman because woman and man get together <laughs> so uh and and again it's just always my default to go to female characters at this stage um but yeah yeah so that was that was the idea behind that and 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 it's yeah i wanted to chart the course of her life and and you know your romantic life is very closely involved with, with the rest of your life you know it's hard to say that there are any other facets of your life that's more important than your romantic stroke family life, you know? Yeah. And what I always find fascinating about your females is that they're not actually set out to have a romance. They, they don't make it easy for the guy. Okay. They're not the one. <laughs> Women rarely do. But <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I was, because I always try to picture myself in these characters and they're always stronger. Like I would have been like, oh, I got this handsome, you know, guy that's like helping me. And, you know, I'm going to go to the ends of the earth to find him and marry him. And, you know, but no, your females don't necessarily take the path that I would take. But I always looked up to them like if I weren't me, who would I want to be? And and Liliana was like, I want to be her. That's who I want to be. But <laughs> She was definitely, except for that she carried the past with her, which was sad, you know, mm. and which, well, how could you not? I mean, how could she not carry it? But I thought after all those years and all her experiences, it was still that experience she had. How old was she? I forget how old she was when it happened. 15? Was she 20. a teenager? 20, oh, yeah. She was older. She was older than a teen. How old? About 20. About 20. Yeah, I was going to say, because yeah. she'd already had an ex she'd already been away from her family, came back to her family. Yeah. So she was older. Her sisters were younger. Um, but I, I try to put myself in their shoes, which, you know, we do as readers, because that's mm -hmm. how we do it. And I'm like, she's, you know, she had so much life ahead of her, but the pain of that experience just did not leave her. That's, that's the title of the book. So that's, that's the echo that she carries with her. You got that, right? Yeah, I did. And it's the longest of all the echoes she has. Right. I, you know, till so, till she gets peace. I, I'm stuttering because I don't want to say my, <laughs> I'm like, there's so much I don't want to say that I could like say. I, hear that, sure. I don't want to give the reader too much away because there is so much more in the story and what happens to her. And I don't want to say too much. So I'll let you talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this. I also wanted to write this, this like the, di the divergent story of um, of the uh, German soldier, the Nazi, and yes. the escape from Europe. Um, that wasn't a chat 
that chapter in the middle of the book where he escapes from Europe, which is just dedicated to him from his perspective. Right. It wasn't a chapter I was originally going to write. Uh, I just thought about it at the last minute and I stuck it in and it went really, really well. I was really happy with it. I, I based his escape uh, from Europe on the same route that Adolf Eichmann took to, to South America. Yeah, and you know what I wanted to ask you, did you ever see that documentary on him where, that, I mean, I just saw it and I was like, oh, I wish I could find it again and watch it about going down to Argentina, you know, like- I've seen a lot of them and there read a lot, a lot of books. I only about just saw one me. recently that was really good. And when, so when I was reading your book, I'm like, you know, I knew a little bit more because before seeing that documentary, I didn't realize because, you know, as a teacher, things we don't learn in school in history, uh -huh. they kind of just like, okay, World War II happens. Yes, that's on. And then you move on. Like you don't get to find out, well, what happened? What happened after World War II besides yeah. Korea? <laughs> like what happened in between? Yes. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You just <laughs> yeah. Tend, tend to jump from one war to the other, don't you? When it comes to history and that kind of thing. But, yeah, yeah. Which is why I love historical fiction, because you fill me in on stories that it's like you answer those questions. Well, what happened to those guys? What happened? What, how did yeah. we go about, you know, and I learned so much even from your book and that documentary of how we went about it. And it really wasn't very just because we, it was, they were hard to find. <laughs> yeah. As you imagine. Yeah. Well, the big enemy became the Soviets, the red menace, and uh, everything was focused towards thwarting them. And if, if, if ex Nazis could help with thwarting them, well, then the, the CIA uh, were very happy to take that help. Yeah. Yeah, which so. is really, I, I'm really happy how you address that in the book, how difficult it was and why so much justice wasn't brought to these men, yeah. you know? Yeah, when I was doing the, it was really frustrating when I was doing the research because I'd always, I'd always look up these random Nazi, like Wikipedia is just genius. I love it. I always give them money on their drives, always. <laughs> and um like it's obviously, you know, you can't use it for free, you know, but just for general storytelling purposes of, of, of people's lives, it's just yeah. so good. So you can just click on a name and see what happened to them and what happened. And then in the end, so, you, so I used to click on all these Nazis and I, and the ones who like got hanged, got none, like in the, after the war, I'd be like, yes. And then the ones, who, but then there'd be so many who got away and there was loads who were then pardoned in the early fifties, like people who got life life sentences would then be pardoned in like 1952 1954 when there was a large amnesty in germany people wanted to put the war behind them and they there was an amnesty granted to a lot of these people and they just got out and then just went to work in audi or whatever you know after that but um yeah it was i'm glad you yeah. put that chapter in i'm glad that you did add that because i did i did enjoy it you know just to see from their perspective what was going on yeah, and yeah. I don't know if I ever told you this because we've talked so many times. So if I repeat myself, I, I'm sorry, but I knew this guy who was in World War II and he was part of the um, going into the concentration camps after the war and releasing the prisoners. Okay. Wow. Not even kidding. That whole documentary was made on him, but he's from this area. And okay. um, so I got a lot of time to talk with him. And he said that when he would go in, they, the Nazi officers who couldn't escape would put on prisoner outfits and try to become a prisoner that they were going to help release, except for there was one problem that they didn't know was going to happen is that, well, they didn't know that we would be aware of is that they had meat on them. They were heavy. Yeah, too healthy. So he said immediately they were taken away to jail, you know, it's like, okay, they, yeah. Yeah, but they would try to act like they had been, you know, to get help, to get out of there, but they didn't count on the fact that they didn't look like a prisoner. <laughs> like it was very easy to detect, you know, who yeah, they were. Yeah, I did. I, I read about something about that before. That's fascinating though. God. Yeah, it was just so much fun being able to talk to this guy. And when he died, uh, which was hmm, about probably 10 years now, um, the funeral that he had, I had never, like the military funeral that this guy had, I had never experienced. The whole area came together for him. You Great. know, he was Fantastic. such a well-known World War II vet, you know, but, Great. and it's very hard now. It's very hard to get this. Thank God he gave his story because we're running out of them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to do, which re leads to you doing more research, it leads to harder research on you guys, but you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's a lot written down. I, 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 yeah, I like the documentaries like The World at War, which was made in 1970, yeah. because a lot of them, the people who are interviewed are only in their 50s and 60s at that stage. Right. And uh, yeah, right. so the, older, the yeah. older stuff is better in that case. Yeah. Okay, well, hold up your book one more time. Everybody, this book comes out on Tuesday. Yes, it does. And you can pre-order it now. Um, it's, oh, like I said, Owen, I'm I'm always a big, huge fan of your books. I, I don't know if you have a bigger fan than me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that when you're, you know, off somewhere and, you know, movies are coming out and, you know. <laughs> oh, movies. Oh, don't talk to me about movies. Tough industry to deal with, let me tell you. I've had first-hand <laughs> experience with them. Absolutely true. And so I'm going to be talking to Owen at the end of the month because he has another book coming out called... Two books. One month. Two books. Can you believe what? it? What is the name of the next one? It's The next one is called The Hidden Soldier. Right. I was just looking at it. I'm like, am I, you know, I have an old brain now. So yeah, the hit, I cannot wait. I'm going to be starting on that one here. Yeah, I'm very second. happy with that. Very happy with that one too. Uh, you'll never believe it's, it's set around World War II. No way. I know. I know. I pushed the boat out of it there. So strange. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I cannot wait. And it's so good to talk to you always. I can't wait. We'll be speaking again in two weeks. But yeah, fantastic. Enjoy right now because we got this one coming out. So have fun with this for the yeah, next Tuesday. Week. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really anxious and excited yeah, and I'll, everything. I'll be stalking you on social media, you know, giving you all my support. So great. Thanks so much. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, thank you everyone for watching. And we will be speaking soon. Owen, thank you. Cool. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,